The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to the disciples, About that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son of Man, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Today we begin the church year. So I guess I should wish everyone a happy new year because technically in the church we do start a new year. I know the civil year doesn't start until January 1st, but in the church we begin on Advent 1, the first Sunday of Advent, and we now move into what's called Matthew's Gospel. The Gospel, we have four stories of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and in the liturgical year, we actually, you know, we divide up the years, years A, B, and C. Year A, we read Matthew. Year B, we read Mark. Year C, we read Luke. And then they sprinkle a lot of John through all of those three years. Okay, so you kind of end up hearing all four Gospels eventually. But today we start that whole cycle, that three-year cycle again. We're now beginning year A on the first day of the new church year. Lighting one candle in the Advent wreath behind me. The crash, yes. I hope you see that. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. But in today's readings, what we encounter are polarities. A lot of them. If you want to look there at that Isaiah lesson that Rowan read, Rowan Fleming read this one, and the, the line here was, they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks, beat their swords. The swords were the uh, weapons, you know. These are the weapons to be used to kill other people, to plunder, to go to war. Now they're going to take those spears, those instruments of war, and they're going to make them into instruments of agriculture, uh, farming, to help others have food to eat. Now here's a test question. Where does this verse appear in public view? Very public view. Anyone know? The UN. Ah, very good, Brian. It's on the UN building in New York City. New York City actually has this quote from Isaiah chapter 2. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. This is a vision of Isaiah that the vision is one of peace and prosperity for everyone. That there are no longer nations going to war. This is Isaiah's vision. And then the UN put this right, this verse right up on its entrance. I've been there. I saw it when I was in New York City. And uh, sure enough, it's right there, quoting from Isaiah chapter 2. Then the passage from Romans chapter 13, Liam Fleming read this, and how Liam Fleming could pronounce debauchery and licentiousness so well, it, <laughs> I got to admit, 
Liam, you know, that's, that was, both of you did a great job, but wow, what words, huh? They got some tough readings. The last Sunday of the month, we have our kids lead us in liturgy. We have our uh, ushers back there in the back. We have kids doing the ushing, ushing, if that's a verb. And we have our readers, and we have our acolyte, we have our intercessor, all young people uh, from our church doing that today, so many thanks. That lesson from Romans is about polarities as well. Listen to this. You know what time it is, that it's the moment for you to wake from sleep. How many of you slept last night? Raise your hand. Every hand should be up. Okay. You slept. Okay. How many of you woke up? Oh, no hands. All right. Yeah. The polarities. Asleep. Wake. For salvation is nearer to you now than when it uh, became believers. The night is far gone. The day is near. Night. Day. Another polarity. Okay? And notice that the night is not done yet. The night is far gone. The day is near. In other words, it's kind of that in between stuff. Okay? The already and the not yet, to use theological mumbo jumbo jargon. Let us live honorably in that day, not in reveling in drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness. Good job, Liam. Uh, not in quarreling or jealousy. Instead, put on the uh, Lord Jesus and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Romans lesson, Paul is using this kind of lingo or the language of polarity. Light, darkness, wake, sleep. In the weeks to come, you're going to hear about making the crooked straight. Making deserts bloom. Those are all to come during the season of Advent. Season of Advent is a season of preparation, anticipation. People say, well, why don't you wear purple anymore? Because uh, the, we say that it's confused with the season of Lent, which is a penitential season. This is a season of anticipation. When, a, when a, uh, a, a young family is expecting a child, they don't put on sackcloth and ashes. They get the house ready, yes? Okay? They get the house ready for the expectant child in joyful anticipation of what's to come. They get the house ready. Yeah, there's that, uh, that, there, that fear, that anxiety about what's going to happen. I, I get it. But there is this sense of joy that's going to happen. And a sense of this child, my child, the child that I brought into this world, could change everything. Now, that's a truth that probably every parent kind of, when they look into their young baby's eyes, don't you just sort of imagine this child who will outlive me might discover the cure for cancer, might do something extraordinary, put someone on Mars, maybe go further into space, make some difference well beyond what you and I could imagine today. You and I live in what we call the already, we've had salvation, we know and experience salvation through Jesus Christ, and the not yet. The night is far spent. It's not done yet. You and I don't live in a world where there is no pain and suffering. We do live in that world. We all do. We still see places where there is suffering and torment and pain and death. That is the reality. And now, into this world comes the most vulnerable thing imaginable, a little baby. In the readings today, what we have are these polarities. Darkness, light, death, life. All those kind of polarities. Swords, instruments of war are going to be made into instruments of abundance so that everybody can have all that they need. Is it a view, vision of the future? I love the fact that Isaiah, when Isaiah writes this passage from Isaiah chapter 2, he's writing as if it's already happened. He's a visionary. How about us? Do you have a vision for what can be done? I hope so. And there's that word. Hope. The first candle that we write light in the Advent wreath is often called the candle of hope because it breaks the darkness. It brings just a little bit of light into the world, like a little baby, a little bit of transformation, and it can happen overnight or not. During the weeks of Advent, 
we, uh, we're looking at Scrooge, you know, uh, Ebenezer Scrooge, who's trans transformed literally overnight by his encounter with the ghost of Christmas past, present, and future. We're looking at that in our, uh, our Sunday morning forum at 9 o'clock. We're looking at all those, the original book, Dickens' book, and then all those movies that came in the 20th century. Fascinating how Scrooge is changed in a night. It happened for Scrooge. That may not happen for you and me. We may be a little bit like that stone that keeps tumbling. What we do is we keep hearing the scripture. It leads to our transformation. Today we begin a new church year, all looking at Matthew's gospel. From now, pretty much till next November, we're looking at Matthew's gospel. Our job is to listen attentively, to let the words sink in and change us just a little bit, like Ebenezer Scrooge was changed. Will it happen overnight? Eh, it could, but it may not, okay? And then you hear this thief coming in the night. Now, I don't know what, whether you've ever had the experience of having a thief come into your house, but a church I was working at, I was actually like the janitor of a church when I lived in Tampa while I was in college. My job was to be the janitor and the gardener at this church in Tampa, and uh, this is back in the 80s, before they had dirt, you know, okay. Um, we had a, like a television and a VCR. I know we don't have any VCRs anymore, but this was a big deal for churches to have a VCR. We had a VCR and a television set, and one night I left a door of the church unlocked, and somebody came in and stole the television and the VCR, and so all of that electronics were gone, okay? That was considered high tech at the time, I know, but it's not anymore. But it was gone. And guess who got blamed? <laughs> yep, I did. Because I did. I left that door unlocked. Police came. They never found the stuff. They never found who took it. Oh, well. But I got blamed for leaving that door open. You know what I felt? I felt two things. The first thing I felt was pretty stupid for leaving the door unlocked, and I felt really embarrassed about it. But I also felt very violated. If you've ever had anything stolen, somebody has come into your property, into your house, into your turf, and taken something of yours. Okay? Jesus uses this image uh, about a thief coming in, the, in an unexpected hour. This thief is not coming for your stuff. This thief is God's beloved thief, and he's coming for you, and me, and your heart, your transformation, your advent transformation, letting God come into here. Because this thief isn't coming for your property, he's coming for you. And if we simply will open up our hearts to what he says, Amen.